there, I'm Terry Panhorst, also known as Dr. P to many of my former students. Today I want to share with you a rock specimen that I picked up on a museum field trip last year. But before we look at that specimen, I need to provide some background information so you understand the, the particular significance of this rock specimen. Now in the area of the western Snake River Plain, there once existed a very large lake. This lake extended from Twin Falls westward into eastern Oregon. Its maximum size, it was probably similar to the current day Lake Ontario of the Great Lakes. It came into existence probably about 12 million years ago and lasted until about 2 million years ago. Now we know the extent of Lake Idaho and its long existence because throughout the western Snake River Plain there are thick sequences of lake bed sediments. A sediment was accumulating in the lake the whole time of its existence. And about 8 million years ago there was some fine grain material moving into the lake accumulating in what we now today call the Chalk Hills Formation. And this is a specimen, an example of typical Chalk Hills mudstone. It consists of a lot of clay and silt and some sands. And we can find this throughout the western Snake River Plain. You can see it in the low rolling hills, which have a lot of white soils all over them. Well, at the same time, in addition to the chalk hills being deposited, there were also a lot of basalt eruptions occurring. And these small volcanoes were putting out basalt lava flows, and sometimes these lava flows actually got into the lake. Now, let me show you an example of typical basalt as we find it in southern Idaho. It's this light gray material, sometimes very dark gray, sometimes almost black. And this particular specimen you can see has a lot of small holes in it. These are vesicles, they are gas holes, which formed at the time the magma solidified at the Earth's surface. Now, in Oahe County, south of the town of Bruno, in the Hot Creek basalt flowed into a shallow part of Lake Idaho. And that leads me into the specimen I want to show uh, you today. And it is an example of where we have Lake Idaho sediments, which is this material all down through here. And within the sediments, we have a piece of basalt actually embedded in the sediments, this, this dark brown material right in here. Now you'll notice that the Chalk Hills formation is not that white that we saw before. Now it's, it's much more of a kind of dark reddish to orange color. And the reason for that is that the basalt came in very hot and it actually baked the underlying sediment to this, this particular color. Now you can also see on here, there's a, a lot of these little kind of bluish green spots all over several of the surfaces of this rock. These are lichen and they grew on the rock after this particular rock was exposed at the earth's surface. So they were, they're modern. They're, they're, they did not exist at the time that the lake bed sediments were accumulating. Now we can see the hot creek basalt and the lake bed sediments throughout that area south of Bruno. But what is particular and significant about this sample is that only rarely do we actually see the point of contact between the basalt and the underlying sediment. So this represented, right in here, represented the lake bottom at the time of the eruption. Now I invite you to come visit the museum and visit in particular the Lake Idaho exhibit we have there. It's a large interactive exhibit where you can see a lot more examples of the rocks and the extent of the lake. Thanks for joining me today.